What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Thomas Take Sports Podcast. I'm Ryan Thomas, bringing you another edition of the Thomas Take, and this is part two of today's show tonight. Uh, tonight's show. It is January 2017, January 13th, Friday the 13th. A lot of crazy things happening in the world of sports. The San Diego Chargers are now one of two teams that will represent the city of Los Angeles. They are now the Los Angeles Chargers as they debuted one of the weirdest logos I have ever seen where the logo looks similar to the Los Angeles Dodgers of Major League Baseball and they are rumored to be changing their name. Um, Not only will they be the L.A. team, but they might not be called the Chargers anymore. So only time will tell. You also have the Clemson victory over Bama in the BCS title game um, and a bunch of other uh, stories. Doug Marone gets the Jacksonville Jaguars job. Um, it's been a bizarre week. That's that's an understatement. Um, and you also have Dana White's statements on a offer in which he made to um, to Floyd Mayweather to fight Conor McGregor. So, that being said, um, I want to talk about some other news that came out uh, in, the M- in the MMA uh, world, and that is Anderson Silva's comments on uh, Conor McGregor. Anderson Silva commented on Conor McGregor today, saying that Conor McGregor has flaws. And I agree with virtually everything that Anderson Silva said. He said, and I quote, He has flaws, we all have flaws, and his flaws are clear. He defends well, but he doesn't have jiu-jitsu. The main thing is that he uses his movement and his opponent's movement in his advantage. He never puts himself in uncomfortable positions. Everyone who fought him put themselves in uncomfortable positions, and you weren't able to get back to comfortable positions again. I think everybody has a chance when you step inside the ring to fight. You have a chance, of course, that is, if you're fighting Mayweather, people would say, oh, McGregor won't last around, but we never know. The movement is different, how you have your feet on the ground is different, the timing is different, boxing, the only way to see is putting them to fight. He would have to stop at least a year to be able to do a close fight, and I believe he should do it. So, Anderson Silva is saying that Connor should take a year off from mixed martial arts to prepare for a boxing fight with Floyd Mayweather. And anyone is entitled to their to their opinion. That's the beauty of the world that we live in today. Freedom of speech. I post my podcast opinions on sports topics, putting my opinion out there for people to agree or to disagree. And my opinion on this particular matter is this. Although I agree with everything that Anderson Silva said, Uh, about Conor McGregor, that Conor is not this invisible, invincible, you know, force, this guy that is the greatest of all time in in many eyes. Um, it, it, It definitely perplexes me to hear him say that McGregor has flaws when, at this stage of his career, Anderson should be focusing on his own career rather than Connors. And I'm sure he is, and I'm sure it was just a question that he answered, but I've heard him answer a lot of questions about a lot of other fighters rather than taking a look at himself. And this is a guy that was proven guilty of steroid use. This is a guy that really willingly lost his title to Chris Weidman with the way he acted inside the cage. Um, I definitely think that he is a stepping stone at this point in his career. He's a stepping stone for the, for the purpose that um, 
he's fighting guys that are up and comers. And case in point, the UFC announced today that Anderson Silva would be fighting Derek Brunson on the UFC 208 card this February. This the next UFC pay per view event. So that came out of nowhere. I don't know if that fight is on short notice or I don't know if that was a fight that was basically hidden under the MMA landscape. But I'm pretty shocked that they put that fight on. Derek Brunson is no joke. He's a young fighter. He's up and coming. Um, He's an up and comer, I should say. And it, it... Definitely surprises me to hear Anderson Silva talk about other fighters' careers when he is a stepping stone now. He's not in the top five. He probably will never get a title shot again in the UFC. Um, And he's not really appreciated for his reign because his reign has a stigma attached to it of cheating and steroid use. And it also has the fact that he fought Chris Weidman, took on the Chris Weidman challenge, and taunted Chris Weidman, proceeded to taunt Chris Weidman, bait Chris Weidman into striking with him, and he got knocked out. So he willingly put his title on the line by his actions, not taking Chris Weidman seriously. At that point in his career, he could have picked Chris Weidman apart, he could have destroyed Chris Weidman, but instead he needed to play his little pitter-patter game, and he lost his belt, and he'll never regain it back. So, to Anderson Silva, if I were to make a comment about what he said, I would just tell him to focus on his own career, focus on what makes his career better. Leave the sport on a high note, rather than leaving the sport as a stepping stone that hasn't won a fight since, I think, 2012, I want to say. It's a long time. Um, So, that's, you know, it, it just, it amazes me how there are fighters out there that open their mouths about other fighters when their careers are basically in the toilet. And I thought that was something that I needed to address. I also want to talk about the Holly Holm versus Jessica Durandamy fight, um, and and what that, what that, um, what the implications are for that fight. I also want to talk about the comments made by Kat Zingano, the former UFC bantamweight champion, content, not bantamweight champion, bantamweight contender. My mind is in so many different places. There's so many, so much stuff going on in the sports world. Um, but Kat Zingano coming back, you know, fighting Juliana Pena at UFC 200. It did not go her way. But she has seen women fighters, male fighters, the whole world really, take shots at Ronda Rousey while Ronda Rousey has had one of the most massively surprising falls, pitfalls, in mixed martial arts history, a true riches-to-rags career. Um, After being at the top, she is at rock bottom right now. And Kat Zingano stated that she owes a lot to Ronda Rousey, and that she understands why Ronda Rousey is at this point in her life, and and for people to not... um, throw stones at Ronda Rousey, kicking Ronda Rousey while she's down, so to speak. And I actually thought that that was pretty uh, remarkable. For her to come out and say, hey, this was someone that I lost to in my only UFC title fight, and without her, I wouldn't be where I am financially, physically, spiritually. Everything that Ronda Rousey represented actually improved my life. And for a fighter to admit that about another fighter, that takes real class to admit that. To say, this fighter changed a lot for me. She understands a lot of what Ronda Rousey went through. Ronda Rousey's father committed suicide. And she's basically saying, don't throw stones at someone that has a history of suicide in their family. Because statistically, it's a genetic um, disorder. 
Th- those were her words, not mine. But, you know, whether that's true or not, I, I really don't know. But for her to kind of stick up for Ronda Rousey, I thought that was pretty awesome. And I think that people have gone a little too far in kicking Ronda Rousey while she's down. Some of it is deserved. Amanda Nunes was being heavily criticized for the way she handled the victory of beating Ronda Rousey. But at the same time, I can see the other side of the coin that says, you know, it explains why fighters would act like that towards Ronda Rousey. Ronda Rousey was not a gracious champion. I don't think that has ever been said about Ronda Rousey. She was not gracious in victory whatsoever, and she sure as hell isn't gracious in defeat. So it's really hard to have a lot to say about Ronda Rousey that is good in any way, shape, or form. But I will say that without Ronda Rousey, women's MMA would not be where it is today. That's just a fact. Women's MMA in general, no matter what division it is, whether it's the bantamweight or strawweight or now featherweight, it wouldn't exist in the UFC if it wasn't for Ronda Rousey. So that is my take on the Anderson Silva comments made about Conor McGregor and Anderson Silva now, in my eyes, being a career stepping stone. Whether he beats Derek Brunson or not, he's not getting a title shot anytime soon, and Derek Brunson lost his last fight to Robert Whitaker. So it's an opportunity for Derek Brunson to get back in the win column and by beating a name like Anderson Silva, which is very possible at this point in Anderson's career, um, it puts him in a fantastic spot uh, moving forward. So that's my take on Anderson Silva's comments and his career, and my take on the comments made by Kat Zingano. That was part two of today's version of the Thomas Take. Today is January 13th, 2017. I'm Ryan Thomas. Thank you for tuning in to the Thomas Take.